it has been said about the followers of action that whatever state they desire at the time of death, they attain. But this has not been said about the followers of yoga. So we need to understand who are the followers of action. According to this passage, they are the opposite of the followers of yoga. And what are the followers of yoga? In an alternate translation of this passage, the followers of yoga are those who are established in unity. So being established in unity means what? According to Zen, what would the Zen master say in this situation? He would say established in unity means being firmly in the eternal present, the eternal here and now, as they always say. So if the yogi is one established in unity, grounded in the eternal present, then that means the followers of action are those who live for the future. If you're following action, basically what that means is that you're living for consequence. You're trying through your behavior to bring about particular consequences, which for some magical reason are never ever what you imagine them to be, which isn't always a, a bad thing. But a follower of action is one who lives for the future. And so he's saying, it has been said about those who live for the future that whatever state they desire at the time of death, they attain. Well, what is the state that they desire? If you're a follower of action, you desire the future. So when you die, the universe, being so kind as it is, lets you live for the future. You can continue to live for the future, but you must take on a mortal body because you have to exist in time to play for the future. But this has not been said about the followers of yoga, those established in unity. The destiny of the followers of action can be described by the organ of speech. It can be named. But the goal of the yogis is inexpressible because it is not an object to be acquired. A yogi has no particular path. This means he's a wanderer. And what is the wanderer? He's the one who no longer lives for the future. He's the one who isn't going anywhere. He reaches a fork in the road. He doesn't stop. How do you tell the difference between a wanderer and a seeker? When the seeker reaches a fork in the road, he stops. He thinks over very carefully. He wants to make sure he goes the right way to get where he wants to go, to receive the consequence that he imagines. And thus he gets stuck at the fork. But wanderers don't get stuck at the fork. And that's how you tell the difference. They reach a fork in the road, they just wander. They just keep going. And somehow the Divine Mother takes care of them. He doesn't get attached. He is unstuck, unattached. A yogi has no particular path. He simply renounces imagining things. Then his mind ceases of its own accord and the perfect state just naturally arises. Wherever a yogi may meet his end, whether beside a holy river or in an outcast hut, his births are through. He merges in Brahman. So the yogi 
having established himself in the eternal here and now. He's saying when he dies, this one's done with the future. This one's done with objects. This one's done with consequences. What is that state where one is in? Where one no longer exists in time? This Maha Samadhi? Where there's no longer this samsara of chasing the future through time and space? Is there time and space in that state? I don't know. That's the beyond conception part of this whole thing. But it would be wise to meditate on that state or invent immortality somehow. 